वेलकम टू सुब्रमणी समबडी केम ऑन द सेल्स कॉल ट्राइंग टू सेल मी एन ए आई एफ वेर द बैकग्राउंड वेर द एसेट्स वेर गोइंग टू बी प्राइवेट इक्विटी विच मीन्स डील्स जन ऑन प्राइवेट इक्विटी बेसिस वुड हैव बीन द बेसिस ऑफ द ए आई एफ एंड द ए आई एफ ऑफ स्टिल एट इट्स कंसेप्चुअल स्टेज एंड Uh, he asked me whether i would be interested in ever putting money into a product like that and i used it as an opportunity to tell him as to why i would not put money into a fund like that so uh, so here is my explanation uh, if you see uh, mutual funds have been very successful uh, and mutual funds uh, also were born sometime in 92 93 other than uti if you leave the if you leave uti apart and that was also the time when uh, the transactions were going electronic and uh, most of the transactions were done on uh, nsc or bsc but everything on an electronic platform prior to that the outcry system there was something called a ring in the bombay stock exchange and you had to go and do the transaction and note down the prices um that was a time when mutual funds were still operating and uh, for people like us who used to be very close to the ring or uh, uh, we knew what was happening we knew how prices could be rigged and how the worst prices were reserved for uh, organized buyers like mutual funds or uh, even insurance company there was only one insurance company so you would find a good company uh, let me not name the company three four prices 500 525 550 560 right four prices uh, which means if you went to buy you would have paid 560 for it if you went to sell you would have paid something like 525 for it and that was the gap called the jobbing difference now jobbing difference could be manipulated and uh, that money could be made by the person who was giving the share to you or by the person who was buying the share for you or by the fund manager uh, in uh, connivance with these people could be uh, giving a bad price for the uh, for the fund or for the scheme right so this could happen and uh, since some of us had seen that happen i had very little respect for uh, mutual fund buying buying now uh, cut to 93 94 when uh, nsc and bsc started uh, electronic platform which meant that transactions could be done very quietly without the world knowing what is happening and you got a price which was uh, recognized by the stock exchange so data capture of all transactions was now far far superior and therefore the back end of the mutual fund industry got cleaned up very quickly and in a very short period of time so when a fund house tells you that they bought infosys uh, at a particular price they bought it exactly at the same price because you can do an independent verification you can take that transaction and go and check with the national stock exchange so today if you were buying through a if you're buying through a broker you don't have to worry whether the transaction happened exactly at that time and that date because the when the broker is giving you a print uh, print out of a contract if at all if you're getting it electronically you can still see it uh somebody else is recorded it exactly at that price and that is not your broker it is the national stock exchange or the bombay stock exchange uh, which which has the data so you can independently verify it why am i taking trouble to explain all this because uh without the back uh, ground being so clean and clear and without you knowing that the transactions are done cleanly it would have been difficult for so many fund managers to be operating because every transaction would have to be audited by somebody making sure that the prices are right right now cut this and come to a uh, aif or a pms which is uh, dealing in um, the, uh, the private equity deals so there is a private equity deal in which the fund manager is supposed to invest now take a very nice case um, you uh, your for you uh, you invested in an aif 100 people invested 1 crore so it's got a 100 crore fund very good now the fund manager has to look for transactions let us say he gets a good transaction he gets one uh, private equity deal which uh, the promoter comes to the fund manager and says okay here is the deal i'll give you my shares at 100 rupees 
and um, uh, maybe I'll do an IPO in five years, six years, seven years. I do not know when, but as soon as possible. We're already halfway through the stage, and so you bought the share at one hundred rupees. Uh, after three years, you find the share is moved nowhere, and you're not very sure about the prospects, etc. And the promoter comes to you. You go to the promoter and tell him, "Look, you're wondering what to do, etc." Then nothing happens. And after three, four months, a broker comes. and tells you you are stuck with this share at 100 rupees it's moved nowhere so i will pay you uh, 200 rupees for it or 180 rupees for it because you have been holding it for 5 uh, years let's say five, let's say it's 5 years and uh, i'll pay you almost 200 rupees for it 170 180 some price he offers and you look at the transaction and say okay it's not too bad anyway i'm stuck with it it's not moving um you talk to the promoter or you don't talk to the promoter and you do the deal at 180 rupees now you have told all your investors that you had invested in this let's call it uh, subra private limited uh, at uh, 100 rupees and uh, and now there is nothing happening but you have not told them that you are doing a deal like this but you have done the deal at 180 rupees and you are done with it and you are uh, you've got the money then you pick up the newspaper and you find after 3 weeks of you doing the transaction you find that he has uh, placed those shares or the promoter has placed uh, some shares with uh, a venture capital company at 480 rupees right you gave up your share at 180 rupees now um, you call up your manager and say wow at last our share of 100 bucks has become 500 bucks or 480 it's a good deal and the fund manager tells you just hold on 3 weeks ago i gave this up at 180 rupees or maybe 130 rupees whatever i got an exit since there was nothing happening i just got rid of it now the question is you are an investor do you believe your manager do you believe the broker do you believe the promoter between the three somebody has made money in that 180 to 480 right that 180 to 480 is completely lost you have not made it and there would be five six such transaction out of which two or three have just just gone fat and one transaction like this which was really a success uh is not available to you you could not participate because of some reason like this this is as far as private equity is concerned take a uh, reits uh is it possible for the fund manager to do a deal where he says oh you pay only so much rent by a check and the balance i'll take it from you in cash is it possible i don't know is it possible that some of the fund managers make a deal with the builder and buy at a particular price including kickbacks i don't know uh, what is what i know is there is no back end capturing data in uh, private equity deals in real estate deals etc the way it is being captured in the regular listed equity market not even the debt market the debt market data capture is definitely not as good not all transactions are captured not captured in real time uh, some of the transactions are done and then the price is posted so really uh, the transparency in the debt market is less uh then the transparency in the equity market equity market remember the pack the prices are being captured live as and when if you doing a transaction at 1159 that the 1159 price is captured so you know that at that point in time that was the best price your fund manager got for you you don't have that kind of data integrity at the background to be able to say that uh, therefore all private equity deals are above par or or um, uh, not worth scrutinizing they will definitely be clean all real estate transactions will definitely be clean when i give my money to a fund manager i want to eliminate the chances of fraud at the back end i it's i'm not saying that there are frauds happening or there are no frauds happening and i'm sure there are various other frauds which can still be happening but at least the trans transaction uh, uh and the capture of the transaction of the time the price at which happened etc by a third party is such a useful asset i don't think we appreciate that enough and also remember 93 94 was a time when sebi was uh, operational so sebi was formed in 92 i think it became operational in 93 94 then there was debate of whether it is a bloodhound or whether it is a barking dog or which is a safeguard can it bite and then they said 
we can't buy it slowly the powers of sebi evolved so that is you have to understand all this which went to make uh, mutual fund successful the background uh, you could now say every fund manager is uh, has got some integrity in terms of the transaction execution so the fund manager himself does not have to worry about the guy going into the ring getting him a good price getting him a bad price right those all those worries got eliminated one by one or or maybe in one shot so this since the background became very clean and clear it is it was possible now for people to do transactions big transactions high volume transactions etc this is not true in REITs. This is not true in private equity deals. So, will I do private equity deals? Yes, by all means, I will do private equity deals where I know the promoter or I know the person who is raising money for him. I have known for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. Then I might do a deal. Will I do a deal through a manager whom I do not know who is managing money for 100 others or 200 others through an AIF to invest in private equity? Answer is no, I will not. Right? Thank you.